Ladies and gentlemen, this is the line we've all been waiting for. It is... It's good night, freaking Irene! Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Time! The nose had a lot of people, the fire truck out! Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the evening. Five rounds of combat sports greatness. The main event is brought to you by the number one combat sports podcast in the world, the Fight Chase Muay Thai and MMA podcast, presented by Fight Chase and the Fight Chase brand. Train, travel, inspire. Also brought to you by Carson Kickboxing Club, a premier Muay Thai and MMA facility. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The challenger fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by the way of Cuba, Enzo Perez. Um, so let's just get right into it. Let's Enzo Perez, welcome to the podcast. Five rounds with a fighter. You're the first one that we're going to do this format with. So Thank let's you. get right into it. Introduce yourself, where you're from, where you're fighting out of. Thank you. My name is Enzo Perez. I'm a professional fighter with three fights out of Havana, Cuba, and I'm fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. What gym are you fighting out of out of there? Extreme Culture. I do my training camp at Extreme Culture. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, All nice. right. Um, so we're going to get right into it, man. So we got five questions from me, five questions from Kurt, off the top of your head, from your heart. Take it easy on me. <laughs> no, no, man. It, it's literally, seriously, it's, it's just from your heart, you know, yes. um, w whatever comes. Round one, fight. The bat. Round one is who are you outside of martial arts? What what is Enzo Perez outside of martial arts? Family man, a hundred percent. It's what I like and I enjoy doing. Spending time with my family, uh, taking my little brother for a walk, uh, taking my mom to the to the newest uh, to the newest restaurant in town, taking my girl out, uh, traveling wherever she wants to go. Uh, that's what I like to do. I like to focus on family. If I'm not in the gym, that's a, a good way to stay out of trouble, stay focused, and stay motivated. Definitely. Nice. Yeah. All right, Kurt, what do you got? So, uh, who is your biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration. That's a big one. Um, I have one in my family, which is my mother. She's seeing all the adversity that she's, uh, that she's had to go through. She has to take me out of Cuba, bring me to this country, and, uh, and help me follow my dreams, something that if I would have stayed in Cuba, I wouldn't have been able to do. Uh, they don't, for once, they don't even have professional sports over there. So it's just the fact that she, she, was, able, she, was, uh, she was willing to stay separated from me for a period of time in order to get me to this country. And now I'm over here uh, being able to pursue that dream and all the sacrifices paying off. That's a, that's a big inspiration for me. Very nice, that's family. Is there anybody professionally? Professionally, definitely. I mean, I look up to a lot of a lot of great fighters like Muhammad Ali, uh, Roberto Duran, uh, Joel Romero. You know, all these superstars. Uh, definitely, they they left some. They left marks. You know, success leaves marks, and they left marks and tracks that I'm definitely uh, trying to follow as I make my own way uh, to the top. Awesome, awesome. Are you on that UL uh, diet? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, monster. Yes, that guy. That guy is an animal. Yeah, I, um, I'm not sure exactly what what, what his diet consists of, but I'm definitely eating a lot of uh, high. I eat a lot, a lot of steaks. I'm not gonna lie. I like a high protein diet. You know what I yeah. mean? Uh, yeah, I like to I like to keep it uh, as Cuban as possible. Rice, beans, and steak. That's how we do it. <laughs> Kurt and I uh, um, met Paharis. When okay. he came, yeah, he was just a yep. monster too. And you're like, yep. 
Man, and this guy want to rip your leg off. <laughs> Brazilians, Brazilians barbecue a lot. So I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever's on that barbecue is good. Uh -huh. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Okay. Round two. Round two. Fight. Is what really motivates you? Whether it gets you up in the morning, what motivates Enzo? Like, what really gets you motivated? I think I'm a perfectionist and I like, uh, I know there's no such thing. So that's already motivation as it is. Uh, I always like to see what I can get better at. So I wake up every day and uh, my focus that day is what can I get better at? So, uh, we're going to work on a boxing mistake today. Are we going to work on a wrestling mistake, a jiu-jitsu mistake? Uh, do we need to gain some muscle mass for the next fight? Uh, there's always going to be a short-term goal and a long-term goal. Because, uh, like I said, there's always room for improvement. So I'm always looking to improve. This is about me. This is about intros introspection. This is about studying uh, yourself and, uh, and seeing where, where you have to go and where you have to work to become a better fighter. Awesome. Perfect. Kurt. So if you could fight anybody uh, in the past or currently, whether they're alive or dead, who would it be? Fight. Uh, man, that's very interesting. I've never asked, I've never been asked that before. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to disrespect somebody by answering the question. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to fight somebody like Arturo Gatti only to hope mm -hmm. to be in a, only to hope to be in a war like he was against, uh, against Mickey Ward, for example. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, it's just from that point of view, it's just to be in that, in that war, in that moment, just to create that type of history. But uh, hopefully in the future, I can find an opponent that stands in front of me like that and we can create some, uh, some history ourselves. Yeah, yeah, those are the best fights. That's yes, kind of, yeah, that, 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 that trilogy right there, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I want to be, be known for that. I want to be a part of that. I want a uh, part of my history uh to 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 have a chapter like that definitely yeah i'll take yeah. a lot i'll have a lot of pride in in leaving something like that behind yeah every fighter has, they need that one you know it, you're just like the adversity the, yes the, the challenge to know that somebody wants it as bad as you definitely you know? yeah and sometimes the fight doesn't live up to the to the rivalry or the or the expectations or w whatever the case may be, and uh, I just hope that whenever, whenever my 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 moment comes, you know, it's just stand and bang in front of that cage for fifteen minutes. <laughs> it's just war. Yeah. The the, uh, the one that pops into my mind is Cater, Cal uh, yes. Calvin Cater's last fight. Yes. Oh my See, god. He's he's an animal, definitely. So something <laughs> like that, something with that style. Somebody that's just gonna stand in front of you and. Only move their heads just enough, but stay there and pa pa pa. Yeah, no, that'll be that'll be beautiful. I'm I'm down. I'm always yep. going to fight. All right, perfect. Round three. All right, number three. Round three. So, what music motivates you? Okay, I really like uh like Linkin Park. Like that that oh. stuff gets that gets me going. Hollywood Undead. Uh, you know, I play that on the car, and by the time I'm in the gym, I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm a killer. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. Th those songs get me going. So uh, those get me going. And when I'm training, I like to listen to salsa. I really like traditional Cuban salsa. It loosens me up. It, it, it gets the job done, you know. They don't put them in boxing gyms for, uh, for no reason. It loosens you up. Uh, it keeps it fun. It mm -hmm. gets your feet moving. It gets your hips moving. And that's... Uh, the, 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 more real, the, the more relaxed you are, the better you feel. So that's the Yeah, point. definitely. I agree. Like, Kurt knows uh, in Thailand, they play a lot of Thai music, and it's really yes. fun. It's yes. really goofy and fun, and, and the trainers are dancing around and joking. And, and I feel like I get such a better training at that point. Like, yes. it's not so serious like Kill, 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 which at Vandalay's, we had a lot of that. But it yeah. was like... And you know when you're done, you like you went to war in training. When I finished training in Thailand, I feel like, man, that was great. Like you, you're vibing with somebody when you're training yes. with them, and, and there's that much yes. energy. That's and uh, Kurt, Kurt and I have both Muay Thai trainers, and I've always said is is, you know, I can't just stand there and hold pads for you. I'm yelling. I'm getting that right. Thai vibe. I'm yay yes. yay, and like trying to yes, get you yes, to go yes. because I feel like as a trainer, I have to give. It, 
as much energy as I can to you to get you to give that back. Yes. Like if I'm just standing there, you're just going to hit. If I'm not yelling at you and, and, and making a, a response to your power and, and telling you these things, and these are all things that I pick up in Thailand is like, you know, I kick and, and they're calling you champion and they're like, yeah. And, and then they're last, the, when they tell you to kick 20 kicks, I mean, Kurt knows, and then the pad holder goes flying and you know, that last kick was garbage. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but but it's that's like, a very interesting point. Uh, I was just thinking how much uh, influence the coach believe in the athlete makes. So oh, it's very, yeah. it's, it's very amazing that, that you guys are bringing that up because I appreciate when a coach is showing that affection and that effort and that effort and giving me that energy that you just mentioned because it, it does exactly what you just said. It, it fires me up. It makes me believe in myself. And then it shows in the way that I'm expressing myself when I'm training. So yeah, yes, definitely. definitely. Yep. You got to give the energy to get the energy. That's how 100%. I've always tried to coach. A hundred percent. What do you got, Kurt? Um, what fight have you learned the most from? So out of all the fights that you've had, whether you won or you lost, which one do you think you learned the most from? Uh, I had a fight uh, back in my amateur days. I had a Muay Thai fight. I was 17 years old and my opponent was 32 years old. I learned, yeah, I won a, yeah, I was still in high school <laughs> in that fight. I, uh, I learned a lot in that fight. Uh, it's just I, realizing who I'm dealing with. You know, I'm not fighting kids anymore. I'm fighting grown men. Their bones are thicker. Uh, their mentality is different. These guys are trying to, these, these guys can really hurt you, you know. So I learned a lot in that fight about the type of adversity that I was uh, destined to face in this fight game. You know, I'm one of those fighters that I haven't had, like, easy PC matchups uh, by, by any means. Every, every one of my fights has been tough, like, Back to back, I'm talking state champ to state champ wrestler to this and that. Everybody has been somebody. And uh, I welcome it. I'm very grateful. I'm very happy. I'm very proud of my career. Round four. Number four. Round four. What are your martial arts goals in general? I would love to be a black belt in every... Uh, in every discipline that you can get a black belt in. <laughs> I, would, I would really love that. Uh, I would like to finish... Uh, my Shotokan karate uh, journey, which the only reason why it stopped is because I left Cuba and the countries that I went to after, which were Portugal and over here, aren't as big with uh, Shotokan karate. So it hasn't been uh, necessarily the easiest thing to find a Shotokan karate gym to finish that journey. I would like to finish that. Uh, I would like to have a Taekwondo black belt. Why not? Uh, I'm already a brown belt, brown belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, whenever the black belt comes, it, make, it, it comes. And uh, black belt in judo will be nice, too. I think those are the main sports that you can get a, a black belt mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Uh, so as, as far as belt systems and martial arts in itself, I would like that. And uh, I would like to fight in, any, uh, in every uh, combat sport as well. I would like to do a bare knuckle Muay Thai fight. Uh, I would like to do a combat sambo. Everything. I, I, want, I, want a, I want a guy in front of me and I want to fight him. I, I, it doesn't matter. I want to fight in every discipline. Let's put it that way. That's interesting because, like, when I travel, I'm not a fighter. I, huh. I competed a lot of jujitsu. I've trained with monsters. I've trained with pro fighters. I started already into my 30s when I started my martial arts journey. So I haven't crossed that. But it's not out of my sight. Like, I still will. Like, people are asking me, you know, well, you ever going to fight? Yeah, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight Muay Thai. Once yeah. I get back to Thailand, I will be training to fight. But I travel a lot. I've been to Cambodia. I trained in Cambodia. I've trained in Vietnam. I've trained in, like, different countries. And when I go there, I'm like, wouldn't it be cool to kind of check that box to yes. fight in this country in their discipline? Definitely. You know, what if you went to Russia and you trained in Russia and you train and you got a Sambo fight? It's kind of like what we think when, when a, 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 you know, MMA enthusiast goes to Thailand and they're like, I want to fight in Thailand. Yeah, you want to fight in Thailand, and typically you fight at an introductory show or or a foreigner with for versus foreigner type of thing. Yeah, in the touristy area, which is nothing wrong with that. You're getting Thai, you're getting a Muay Thai fight, but it's like people that venture off outside right. of that. It, it, that's an amazing thing, and so yeah, yes, I totally yes, understand yes. where you're coming from. It's like if I can learn the discipline, if you can take it to that highest competition level, yes, and, and just see what happens. That's that's a that's a cool thing, definitely. Yeah. All right, Kurt. 
number yeah, four. So my next question is like right before you know you're going out there to fight, um, like how do you handle uh, the fear, the anxiety that comes with competing? Like right before you're about to step out there, do you have like any type of process or anything that you use? So the thing with me is that I'm very comfortable in that cage to the point where it's, I'm, uh, I'm too relaxed and too calm. So I have to fire myself up and remind myself that this is a fight because I've been doing it now for, for, for a little bit to the point where I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried in there. And that's a bad thing. I should be worried. You know what I mean? Because it's a fight. Mm-hmm. The, the, the guy in front of me wants to hurt me. So very, very, that, that, that whole time I'm just trying to get myself going uh, mentally uh, to get more aggressive. You know, I'm trying to become aggressive. I'm trying to get angry. That, that works for me. That works for my fight style. That works for my mentality. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just too relaxed. And uh, I've had fights where I've been too relaxed backstage. I've been too relaxed in the fight. You know, like I'm just, that's, there's no other word to put it. Relax. Yeah. So I'm trying to, uh, to remind myself, hey, this is a fight and you have to go out there and actually hurt this guy. Like, it's, it's now. So that's pretty much what I, what I, what's on my mind right before I fight. I'm making sure that my mind is in the right mindset, which is uh, go out there and kill. As long as my mindset is in that mode, I'm, uh, I'm good to go. What is it that you're, you ha- – because you have to force it. I'm the same way. I'm mad yes. relaxed. Like- yes, yes, yes. I never, like, even, I, I trained jujitsu. I could train with the highest black belt, and I never, like, I'm like, what's the worst that'll happen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you're like, I'm good. <laughs> I, I also, I also pick up energy from my, uh, from my opponents. I've had opponents that are very calm yeah. and, uh, very quiet. Uh, my last opponent, he has some trash talking to do, so that helped me fire up. That, it wasn't, it wasn't hard to be fired up at all. He was talking crap at Wayne's. He was talking crap on, on Instagram a month before the fight, during fight camp. So when I had this guy in front of me, I was like, yep, like, it's now. Not, like, now I'm going to talk. Yeah. Now, that, was, that was my mentality. I was like, I'm going to talk now inside the cage with my fists, with my elbows, with my knees, with my chins. So, but if it's, if it's another person like you, a professional, a martial artist, that's, that's dealing with these things the same way as you are. So you're giving off that positive energy and, and the guy is, is very respectful and you're in the back. What does it take in your mind to click that switch? Uh, how hard I've worked. I definitely don't care about the other guy. I don't care if he's as professional as me. I don't care if he's a martial artist. I like At that point, he has no credit. He has no respect. He has absolutely nothing. He only gets that after the fight. If that makes sense, he's a hundred percent. He's a hundred percent my enemy, and he wants to take everything from me. And he wants to take my dreams, and he wants to crush him. And uh, if I don't kill this guy in front of me, I will not get to where I have to get to help my family. So very primal, very survival, very real for me at least. Um, everybody does this sport for a different reason. So people do this as a hobby. Mm-hmm. This is my life. This is not a game. I have to win. It does matter to me. And I uh, have to get the win at all costs. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things. I don't know how you do it, Kurt, but when I've walked fighters out before, when you, you, you kind of everybody talks to the fighter, and I always tell them, I'm like, nobody, this guy didn't work as hard as you. This guy doesn't want it as much as you. You go and take what the fuck is yours. You take what's yours when you get in that cage. That's your house. And that's. Definitely. It, it, it's one of those things like everybody says something different to to trying to get a fighter going you know you got the guys that get all wild and 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 you know slapping them and all that stuff but i always kind of try to just you already did all the work just go do what you know you can do final round fight this is the final round all right if you lose you're done we throw this episode away uh, <laughs> <okay>. uh, <laughs> just joking i'm gonna let Kurt go first so go nice. with- okay so what is like who's your um what's your favorite fight like either a fight that you've had or like a fight that you've seen like does something come to mind as far as like what uh one of your favorite fights is uh man when i think of favorite fights i think of uh Diego Sanchez versus Gilbert Melendez, for example. Oh, that was a crazy one. Yeah. That's 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 a good fight. I think of uh, uh, Leonard Garcia, his fighting style, you know, just brawling, standing in front of you, bam, 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 bam. Uh, fights like that. Uh, 
Forrest Griffin versus Stephen Bonner, like a real fight, man. Like two men standing in front of each other going at it. Yeah. Just <laughs> fighting, throwing it, throwing everything out. Uh, you know, respect at the end. Re re respect when everything is said and done, you know. So fights like that, uh, fights that make history, fights that help grow the sport, fights that it's going to be 15 years later and kids are going to still watch it, you know, 20 years later and kids are still going to go back and watch it. Real fights, you know what I mean? Real competitive fights that, uh, that inspire people to work hard, that inspire people to fight a certain way. You know, um, anything with Vanderlei Silva in it, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in. I'm in for that. Uh, Noguera, uh, hope, I don't want to take that much punishment and then come back and win, but even that's inspiring in itself, you know what I mean? So just everything, I feel like everything that has happened as far as the, the, the fights in the 30-something years that MMA has, uh, has helped us get to where we are today, which is, the, in my opinion, the best, most entertaining, the most popular sport in the world, everything in general. So fights that, that help grow the sport and help grow the legacy of what we're all creating, which is um, this MMA uh, empire. All of us, you guys doing this, this podcast, everybody's making, a, everybody's making a difference into, into growing this, this community in general. So yeah. I, I just want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of growing the sport. And uh, hopefully with my fights and my fight style, we can make those things happen. Definitely, definitely. All right, this is it. Final question. So this is serious. And it, it, it's, it, it's <laughs> some people say it's kind of a dark question. So when you're gone, you, most of us, especially martial artists, people that, that really have a, a, a full feeling like big heart, um, what is your legacy? What are you leaving behind that people will look to? Good, bad, different. What, what do you want your legacy to be when, you're, when it's past your days? Glory and honor, my man. Glory and honor. I want people to remember uh, my attitude right before each fight. I want people to remember how I was never afraid of any opponent, how I always believed in myself, how I never failed to... To prepare for a, for a fight, you know, every fight I take very seriously. Uh, professional to beginning to end. I want to be a fighter that did things right, set a good example, uh, stayed away from drugs, stayed away from the clubs. Uh, just true, honest, hard work, and a good attitude when it, when it's time to fight. The correct attitude when it's time to fight. I want to be remembered for that. Respectful, Perfect. respectful, yet fearless. Glory and honor. Awesome, awesome. That's it, Enzo. Yeah, that was great. You win. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys win. Champion, man. You guys win. Uh, honestly, this has been awesome. Uh, this is just no. You guys, you guys are amazing, and I'm uh, very grateful to be uh, to be a part of this uh, this project that you guys are doing. Thank you for having me as the as the first one. Uh, you said it's uh, five five rounds with a fighter. Five rounds yes. with a fighter. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be able to speak with you guys. Uh, thank you. Man, thank it's you. been an honor oh, yeah. to have thank you. you. Uh, I know you got to bounce to go catch a plane. So Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm heading to California right now to get some training uh, in the San Jose area. So okay. oh, nice. thank you. Yes, thank you guys. Enzo, thank man, you. thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna hit you up and let you know when we're gonna put this out yes, and share all the links and everything with you. Yes, sir. Thank you all so right, much. Buddy. All right, all right. Thank have, you. A good have a good thank day. Safe. Travel safe, thank buddy. You. Thank you. Thank you. Flawless victory. Thank you once again for listening to the number one combat sports podcast, the Fight Chase Muay Thai and MMA podcast. You can follow us on Fight Chase on all the social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And also, don't forget you can support us at any time. Go to the anchor.fm backslash Fight Chase, hit the support icon, and you can support us for as little as 99 cents a month. We truly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And Kurt, don't say boom. Boom.
Round 4 5